So our poster is focused on price elasticity, which is a measure of demand for a product in relation to the change in its price, such as a pharmaceutical drug or device. We wanted to explore the factors that influence a product's uptake in both major European markets, such as Germany, France, Italy, Spain and the UK, and in the USA, including value-based pricing factors, as well as how the factors might vary between different market archetypes, influencing the way stakeholders prioritise healthcare products. In order to explore the factors that influence a pharmaceutical product's uptake, it was important to establish a baseline for price elasticity of demand within the pharmaceutical market before identifying possible factors that influence price elasticity, as well as explore the variability between geographical regions according to payer archetypes and market access policies. We therefore undertook a targeted search analysis using heading terms and keywords derived from relevant articles and results were subjected to a thematic analysis of the literature screened and identified from the search strategy. A comparative analysis was then conducted across all markets for top identified factors and value-based elements likely to influence price elasticity of demand, market dynamics or product uptake. Our review confirmed our understanding of the relative inelasticity of price volume for prescription drugs and treatments, given their necessity to patient health and well-being. The table shows that elasticity values ranged from minus 0.015 to minus 0.37. Products with a price elasticity of 1 are said to be elastic, whilst those with elasticity closer to the value of 0 are inelastic. As such, the results indicated that demand for pharmaceutical drugs is largely independent of an increase in drug prices. However, we did find that elasticity in some cases may vary according to drug type. One other aspect that is also broadly understood is that payers across markets may have different criteria to make healthcare funding and reimbursement decisions, such as Europe versus the USA. Our results found that whilst Europe is assumed to be a largely homogenous market in its approach to evidence and value-based pricing policies, the EU can be heterogeneous in the distinct differences within their individual value-based processes. Our results outlined well-understood practices across different European markets. So in Germany and France, pricing and reimbursement decisions were found to be primarily driven by clinical effectiveness and benefit, whereas England is driven by cost effectiveness, with the health technology assessment process relying on quality adjusted life years. Meanwhile, Italy and Spain typically evaluate new therapies based on their overall budget impact. We also found that there is further distinction whether decision making is made centralised, such as France and Germany, and um, or is made decentralised, such as Italy, Spain, and to some extent, the UK. Meanwhile, in the USA, whilst it is described as a free market, due to the lack of value-based practices, heterogeneity in access and reimbursement occurs due to variances in coverage determination and private insurance provider offerings between states. Interestingly, our research also uncovered some of the recent introductions of regulatory policies to targeting drug pricing and market access, such as the Inflation Reduction Act. Finally, we found that the archetype of a country dictates payer priorities and therefore influences factors that affect demand, as well as pricing levels. For example, France has the highest expenditure on pharmaceuticals within the EU, yet the lowest number of regulatory policies or mechanisms. We found that in markets focused on clinical benefit, such as Germany and France, comparative value was emphasised through added clinical benefit relative to current standard of care, a criterion critical to both the GBA and HADS evaluation processes. Therefore, evidence that showed efficacy and product safety were key drivers of price and demand by relative stakeholders in these markets. Meanwhile, cost effectiveness and budget impact were considered key decision factors for reimbursement in Italy and Spain. Comparative efficacy was also recognised as a primary driver of demand and uptake via prescribing decisions. In the USA, however, since the evaluation of comparative effectiveness was not mandatory to support access and prescribing decision making in the US, despite healthcare reforms that include several provisions to increase the use of comparative effectiveness research at the payer level to control drug pricing and coverage determinations, the wider impact on demand was not able to be determined within our research.
In conclusion, we confirm that price elasticity of demand for pharmaceutical products is largely inelastic and that there is heterogeneity between payers in different markets with respect to the adoption of policies and mechanisms to mitigate increases in drug prices and utilisation, while improving reimbursement and access to pharmaceutical goods. Finally, the archetype of a country dictates payer priorities, influencing factors that affect demand. Due to value-based approaches used to influence market dynamics, including the evaluation of comparative value, availability of generic biosimilar substitutions, and adoptions of value-based pricing agreements, the US is considered a free market when compared to Europe, which ultimately translates into price differentials and uptake between Europe and the USA. Whilst our findings confirm a widely accepted concept that drug product demand is largely inelastic to price changes, our research highlights some of the post-marketing factors that drive uptake as a result of payers' prescriber priorities. It also dissects the payer archetypes and policies that drive these factors that influence uptake. Interestingly, we feel the poster also addresses some of the misconceptions around the USA and its free market persona, indicating that some of the recent changes in policies which the USA have implemented to address increasing drug prices taking very small steps to align policies with those in Europe, which have benefited from lower drug prices. I hope that these are findings that ISPO attendees can take forward when exploring their strategies to optimising commercial success for their products.